Hello everyone and welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the topic rectilinear propagation and reflection at plane surfaces. So let me start by giving you the quote of the day which states that focus on collaboration and not competition. Focus on collaboration and not competition. So today we are going to discuss about the pinhole camera. So you need to know that the word pinhole is coming from two words. That is a pin then a hole. So a pin is just uh, uh, maybe something like a needle that can be used to pierce a small hole. So when we are talking of a pinhole, a pinhole camera, it means it has a hole which is actually made using what? A pin, just a very small hole. So today we are going to discuss how to make a pinhole camera. So the apparatus that you may require are, one, you may need a cardboard box, you may also need a translucent paper, then you may need a pin that is to make the pinhole then you may also need uh, uh, what we call uh, of course uh, the card box yes so those are the apparatus required translucent paper cardboard box then uh, uh, a pin so to make a pinhole camera this is the procedure that we usually follow one make a box make a small box of about 15 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter that is, you just make a box which has a length of uh, 15 cm, width 10 cm, and height 10 cm of a card box. Then you paint its inside black. That is, inside it, these uh, card box of yours, you paint it black all over. That is, uh, inside it. After that, you cut off a square hole that is of about uh, 6 cm by 6 cm. This is what we are calling the, you cut off a square hole here at the, back then after cutting off the square hole which is about six centimeter by six centimeter at the back you cover that hole with a translucent uh, tracing paper or a greased white paper so after making that hole of about six centimeter by six centimeter you cover that hole with a translucent paper you cover it with a, a translucent tracing paper or sometimes we use a greased white paper then after that, you must ensure that the paper should be fixed tightly with glue or solotape. So you fix that paper with either glue or a solotape at the back. Then, so this makes the screen onto which the camera makes the picture. So this, the transparent paper, will be our screen where our pictures will actually be formed. Where our pictures will be formed. Then after that, you make a hole with a nail at the front end. So this is what we are calling the front end. So you make a very small hole uh, using a nail. Uh, that is a, a pinhole, just a small hole. So you uh, make a hole with a nail at the front end of the box and cover it with a black paper. So after making the hole at the front part of the uh, cardboard box, you cover it with this uh, black paper. So you take the black paper, then you cover it. Or, uh, at the region where we have actually that small hole then after that after covering it with the black paper you make a small pinhole with a paper pin or a needle on the black paper directly in front of the hole made with a nail so after making actually after bringing this paper here you also make a hole a very small pinhole uh, with the same same nail uh, on this black paper but ensure that they are exactly at the same position with the uh, the gap uh, that was originally actually here. That is at the front part of our pinhole camera. So that is the procedure of actually making a pinhole camera. So uh, how, what is a pinhole camera? So a pinhole camera, it simply consists of a closed box. This is what we are calling a closed box or sometimes we use a what? A cardboard box. So it consists of a closed box painted black inwards uh, or inside so you just take uh, a, a, a box a cardboard then you paint it uh, inside then uh, so it consists of a closed box painted black inside with a small hole on one face uh, and a screen of translucent paper on the other side so here is the screen of translucent paper where the images will be formed then at the front part uh, of that particular card box you just make a very small uh, pinhole a very 
small pinhole. Then uh, we can also look at uh, how images uh, are formed. In so we look at uh, image formation in a pinhole camera. So the diagram that you you saw uh, in our first page there, actually we have just taken a, 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 a sample or just a diagram from that particular pinhole to demonstrate how the image will actually be formed. So this is how we use a, a pinhole to, make, to form an image. So the object to be viewed is placed on the side facing the pinhole. So if this was our pinhole, so you place the object in front of that particular pinhole. So the object to be viewed is placed on the side facing the pinhole. That is this way. Then uh, we actually use this diagram here to show actually how the pinhole works. So you just place the object uh, in front of this particular pinhole. So the distance from the object, remember this is our object in this case, uh, then of course the image is usually formed on the screen. That is the region that had what we call the translucent, uh, the translucent uh, paper. So because the image uh, will be formed on the translucent paper, it means here will be our image. So the distance from the object to the pinhole, remember this is the hole uh, that is made by the pin. So this distance from the object uh, whose images will be obtained and the pinhole, this is what we call the object distance. Why object distance? Because that is the distance from the object to the pinhole. So this is the object distance. And in physics, we usually denote the object distance by small u, by small u. So the distance from the object to the pinhole is called the object distance. Then the distance of the... Uh, the distance of, from the pinhole actually to the screen, that is where the image uh, will be formed, is called the image distance. And in physics, we usually represent it by small v. We represent it by small v. So you need to know those particular uh, dimensions because uh, there are some calculations that will involve the same. Then the height of the object, we, demot we denote it by small h, then also with a small o. So this represents height of the object. That is the distance from the lower part of the object measured up to the top part of the object. This is what we are calling the HO, the height of the object. Then the distance of the image is called a height of the what? Image. That is the length of the image. That is the distance from here up to the lower part or simply the length of the image. That is what we call the height of the image. The height of the image. Now it is also important to note that uh, the the image distance will always be equal to the distance from the pinhole up to the screen. Why? Because the image distance is usually the distance from the pinhole up to the where the object the image is formed. And remember, the image is always formed on the screen. So the distance from the pinhole to the screen is called the ob the image distance. Is called the image distance. So from there, we can actually look at what we call magnification, which will involve comparison between the heights of the object and heights of the image, and, o and of course also the, uh, the object distance and the image distance, of course, uh, measured from the, uh, the pinhole, measured from the... So we look at what we call uh, magnification. We look at magnification. Uh, before you even look at magnification, you also need to note that the image formed uh, in a pinhole camera, it is always real and inverted. It is real and inverted. Real means it is formed on the screen. As you saw in our previous page, actually the image was exactly formed on the screen. So when, whenever an image is formed on the screen, we say that the image is real. Then our image was also inverted. That is... The object was uh, facing upwards, but the image was actually facing downwards. So to be inverted, it means it is upside down. So those are the, you can be asked to give the characteristics of what? Images formed in a pinhole camera. So one, you say that the image formed is real, and two, the image formed is inverted. Then, if the object is moved closer to the pinhole, that is if you move the object uh, closer to the pinhole, the image formed becomes actually bigger. And whenever the object is moved far from the pinhole, then the image formed becomes what? Smaller. 
then the change in size of an object uh, relative to that of an image is what we, we are calling now magnification. So what is magnification? So magnification is simply uh, the change. Magnification is simply the change in size of uh, an image relative to that of the object. The change in size of an image relative to that of the object. That means when we are talking of size, we are actually talking of the image, the height of the image or image height and the object height. So we are comparing uh, the comparison or the relativity between the uh, image height and the object height is what we are calling magnification. Then also we can also compare them in terms of the distance measured from the pinhole. Remember the distance from the pinhole up to the image uh, where the image is formed is called the image distance or the distance of the image. So that means magnification can also be given by the distance of the image from the pinhole which we denoted by small u small v divided by the distance of the object from the pinhole which we denoted by small u. So uh, magne it is also important to note that magnification is a ratio and a ratio usually doesn't have units. Why? Because the units will usually cancel off. For example if the uh, image height was something like 10 centimeter then the object height maybe was something like 20 centimeter it means the centimeters the 10 centimeters of the image because we are dividing with the 20 centimeters of the object they will the units will actually cancel out that is the centimeter and the centimeters will cancel out that's why magnification is a ratio so a ratio usually uh, doesn't have units a ratio usually doesn't have units another common question here is that uh, what are the advantages of using a pinhole camera to take pictures? What is its advantage and what is its disadvantage? So the advantage of taking pictures using a pinhole camera is that the, the, pinhole, ca the pinhole camera does not require focusing. It does not require focusing. So the advantage, if you are asked to give the advantage of using a pinhole camera to take pictures is that the advantage is that the pinhole camera does not require any focusing does not require any focusing that is of the uh, image does not require any focusing then the disadvantage of using a pinhole camera is that it cannot take pictures of what moving objects the disadvantages of using a pinhole camera is that one it does not take it cannot take pictures of moving objects and two is that the exposure time is too long due to the size of the pinhole so because the size of the pinhole is small it means you have to exposure or you have to look at the object for several times uh, uh, before you actually get the desired what image so the two disadvantages of using a pinhole camera to take pictures is that one the pinhole camera cannot take pictures of moving objects and two the exposure time is too long due to the size of the pinhole that is it requires a larger exposure time as compared to other types of what cameras so here we have already defined what magnification so in short we are saying that magnification which is uh, represented by capital m will be equal to height of the image divided by height of the object the same same magnification is also equal to distance of the image from the pinhole that is v divided by distance of the object from the pinhole that is a uh, small u so if I take only the uh, uh, the initials, it means M, which stands for magnification, is equals to V, which stands for distance of the uh, image from the pinhole, divided by U, which stands for the distance of the object from the pinhole. The same same magnification is also equal to height of the image divided by height of the object. So it is also important for students to note that whenever we are looking at a magnification, we always start with the that of the image, then we divide by that of the object. So for example here, we are talking of height of the image, then divided by that of the object. Here we are talking of distance of the image, divided by distance of the what? The object from the uh, pinhole. Uh, yeah, from the pinhole. So magnification can be given by M is equals to V over U, which is equals to HI over HO. So we said V represents the uh, image distance or distance of the image from the pinhole then u represents the 
object distance or distance of the object from the pinhole which is equals to height of the image divided by height of the object now this formula can actually be broken uh, down into three parts so the formula means if i take this part only this part that is from magnification up to v uh, over u it means magnification can be given by v over u alone another case we can also combine uh, we can take magnification i combine magnification with this one here magnification is equals to hi over ho so it means magnification can also be given by height of the image over height of the object then lastly we can also take this one and this so it means v over u is equals to hi over ho so these are the three formulas that can be used to compute any question involving magnification that is uh, the image distance the object distance the height of the image and the height of the object so to understand that better we look at uh, a few examples uh, involving calculations which actually is uh, using this formula so we look at an example involving calculations on question so uh, in our example one here actually reads that the distance between the pinhole and the screen of a pinhole camera is 10 centimeters full stop the height of the screen is 20 centimeters full stop at what minimum distance from the pinhole must a man 1.6 meters tall stand if a full length image is required if a full length image is required so the first thing when you are faced with such a problem is to identify the quantities available to help you identify that we can just sketch here a small uh, diagram of a pinhole camera which will help us understand uh, uh, how to go about that question so here we are told that the distance between the pinhole and the screen of a pinhole camera is 10 centimeter so the distance between the pinhole and the screen uh, that is what represents the uh, the distance between the pinhole and the screen that one represents the uh, the image distance the image distance here is the pinhole and here is the screen the screen so the distance between the pinhole and the screen that is the uh, distance of the image or simply the image distance which is of course represented by a small v so we have v is uh, actually 10 centimeter then we are told that the height of the screen is 20 centimeter now remember that the height of the screen will be equal to the height of the image the height of the screen will always be equal to the height of the image which is of course 20 centimeters then we are asked to that uh, at what minimum distance from the pinhole must a man 1.6 meters tall so remember in this case the man is our object the man is our object because the rays of light will always emanate from the object then uh, they are formed on the screen so the man in this case is our object so the man is 1.6 meters tall uh, so we are asked at what minimum distance from the pinhole so they're asking us to find the distance from the man uh, the distance of the man from the pinhole so in short it is this distance which is a uh, u that is the distance of the object or the object distance so from our formulas we know that magnification is equals to height of the image by by height of the object which is also equal to uh, the image distance by by the object distance that is from the measured from the pinhole measured from the pinhole so once you have this formula you are you look at the quantities given then you are you identify which two combinations will be appropriate for your question so like in this case we are given a uh, v which is 10 centimeter we are also given u uh, no we are asked to find u we are given h uh, o then we are also given h i so it means this part of the formula will simply be appropriate for us that is height of the image divided by height of the object is equals to uh, the image distance divided by divided by the object distance which is u but before you compute any calculation in physics first of all you must ensure that quantities are in their respective si units so because we are talking of distance here and remember distance is a length then the si unit of length we did say is actually meter so it means all quantities should be converted to meters so the 10 centimeters converted to meters that is a uh, 10 centimeters divided by 100 you get actually 0 0.1 meters 
Then 20 centimeters into meters, you simply divide by 100. So you get 0 0.2 meters. Then the 1.6, that one is already given in a meter. So there is no need of uh, converting it again. So here we just substitute the values in our formula. Here height of the image is 0 0.2 meters, which was 20 centimeters. Uh. That is we've converted it into meters. So 0 0.2 meters divided by height of the object, which is actually this 1.6. So divided by 1.6 should be equal to V. V is the image distance. So the image distance is 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters into meters, you divide by 100, so you get 0 0.1 meters. Then divide by U. So remember U in this case is our unknown. So to find the value of U, we do what we call cross multiplication. Alternatively, you can just take a reciprocals on both sides. But let, let us go with the way of cross multiplication. So U will cross multiply with 0 0.2, then 1.6 meter will cross multiply with 0 0.1 meters. So 0 0.2 meters times u, we actually get 0 0.2 meters times u, which is equals to 1.6 multiplied by 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 meters times 1.6. So to remain with u alone, because the u is the unknown, we divide both sides by 0 0.2 meters so that we remain with only u on one side. So if I divide this side by 0 0.2 uh, meters, actually the 0 0.2 meters will cancel with the 0 0.2 meters on this side so that we remain with uh, u alone. Then that 0 0.2 we divide it on the other side so that we have u alone being equal to 0 0.1 meter times 1.6 meter divided by the 0 0.2 meters that was actually here. So you perform this calculation either manually or by use of a calculator you will actually obtain 0 0.8 meters. So here we simply conclude that uh, the question asked what minimum distance from the pinhole must a man stand 1.6 meters if a full length image is required remember full length image means that the image will be uh, equal the height of the image will be equal to the height of the pinhole no the height of the screen actually so we simply say that the man must stand 0 0.8 meters uh, uh, from the pinhole for the image to be a uh, full length for the image to be full length so in case you've not understood this we can look at uh, another which is involving the same same concept uh, that is on uh, magnification so the example reads that an object of height 5 meters an object of height 5 meters is placed 10 meters away from a pinhole camera calculate a the size of the image if its magnification is 0. 0, 1. Then the length of the pinhole camera, uh, the length of the pinhole camera. So in part A, we are given magnification as 0 0.01. So the most important thing first of all is to identify the quantities given. You look at the quantities given, then you look at our combined formula, then you identify which two parts of the formula will actually be appropriate for your calculation in that particular case. So like in this case, we are given that an object of height, uh, 5 meters. So this is HI, that is height of the ob height of the object. That is HO, an object of the Im an object of height 5 centimeter. So that is HO is 5 centimeter. Is placed 10 meters. Uh, it is placed 10 meters away from a pinhole. If the object is placed 10 meters away from the pinhole, remember the distance from the uh, object to the pinhole. Uh, that is what we call the object distance that is the object distance which is denoted by small u so u is actually 10 meters so we are required in part a to calculate the image if the size of the image that is a uh, hi if its magnification is 0 0.01 meter so from here we simply say magnification is hi over ho remember i'm using this combination because i'm given both m and hi so uh, what is required is the HO, that is the height of the uh, object, that is the height, no, we are required to find the height of the image, but we are given height of the object. So you simply substitute here, magnification is 0 0.01, so where there is M I substitute with 0 0.01 is equals to height of the image, that is what we are required to find, then divide by height of the object. So remember the height of the object we are given as 5 meters, so we divide by 5 meters. 
So to remain with height of the image on this side alone, we multiply both sides by 5 meters so that the 5 meter actually cancels out. So I multiply here by 5 meters, then this side also by 5 meters so that this 5 meter actually cancels with the 5 meter here so that I remain with HI alone on this side. So that HI is equals to 5 meters times 0 0.01. So you simply get 0 0.05 meters, 0 0.05 meters which can also be given in centimeters as 5 centimeters, although the correct answer should actually be 0 0.05 meters because the SI unit for length is actually the meters, although you can also give it in centimeters. There is no harm. That is depending with the specifications of the question. So part B, we are given that uh, we are required to find the length of the pinhole camera. So remember, the length of the pinhole camera, the length of the pinhole camera, is always equal to the length of the pinhole camera is always equal to the distance from the pinhole to the screen which is actually the image distance so the length of the pinhole camera is always equal to the image distance which we represent by small v so here it means magnification is equals v over u so we simply say magnification is still the same 0 0.01 is equals to v is our unknown divided by u we are given remember u is the object distance from the pinhole which is actually 10 meters so we simply say 0 0.01 is equal to v over 10 meters so to remain with v alone on this side we multiply both sides by 10 meters so times 10 meters times 10 meters so that this 10 meter and this 10 meter they actually cancel out so that we remain with v alone being equal to 10 times 0 0.01 so one zero goes with one decimal so that we remain with 0 0.1 meter we remain with 0 0.1 meter so having understood those two examples i have some exercise here which i recall students should also try and see whether they got the concept that is involving our uh, calculations on magnification so part a of the question reads that a man 1.7 meters tall stands in front of a pinhole camera of length 30 centimeter full stop if the height of the screen is 20 centimeters, find the distance between the pinhole and the man that will give the largest image. That will give the largest image. So I've computed and the expected under is 255 centimeter or 2.55 meter. Then question two on part of the exercise reads that a building standing 20 meters away, 20 meters from a pinhole camera produces, uh, produces on the screen of the camera an image of 2.5 centimeters high comma five centimeters behind the pinhole full stop determine the actual height of the building so i've calculated and expected under is 10 meters or a thousand centimeters or a thousand centimeters so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of our day which stated that focus on collaboration and not competition that is when we we tend to achieve more when we collaborate uh, than when we compete it is always said that if you want to go far go alone but if you want to go further go with others for example if a student who is good in physics uh, helps a student uh, who is good in uh, mathematics to understand physics and the student who understands mathematics helps the students who understands physics to understand mathematics at the end of the day all those students will benefit that is the student who had the who knows physics will understand math because he's, he has been taught by the student who knows math then the student who knew math alone has been taught physics so at the end of the day you have double knowledge you understand math and what physics so that is collaboration but if you are competing you will remain with your physics then you don't know mathematics then the other student will remain with his math and will have no clue about physics but when you collaborate you both grow so focus on collaboration and not uh, competition then i tend to believe that we are naturally born being generous but the in some cases the school system instills greediness in us for example in most examination most examinations actually encourage students to compete instead of what collaborating but the truth of the matter is that when you look at the best performing companies in the world today they don't compete they collaborate with each other they collaborate with each 
other so when you collaborate you tend to acquire more then i have a personal opinion that actually schools should teach us how to think not what to think i tend to think that in most cases schools teaches us what to think uh, instead of how to think the problem with being taught what to think is that when you get to the real life situation you now face the real life problems uh, which requires you to think but in school you are taught what to think uh, but life requires you to know how to think so that you can solve problems this is kind tuition academy kindly hit that subscription button on youtube thank you